All right. In this review, I want to look at the various Enterprise incarnations I have. These are all um, original series Enterprise, which, while not being my favorite, is um, definitely an, an excellent design. Uh, the first one I want to look at is the Corgi Enterprise, um, released in, I have no idea, maybe 2007? It was about the time they lost the Star Wars license. Um, this is the Corgi Enterprise. It is approximately um, eight and a half, nine inches long. It's a very nice size. Um, it's got a beautiful paint job. Uh, that's probably the best thing about it, is the paint job is excellent. It's super sharp and clear and clean, and there's... I didn't notice any slop, any mistakes, any anything... That, the, the, the lettering, the pinstripes, the windows, everything is a very nice, super, super sharp, super clear, clean paint. Uh, the body is a, a nice... I don't know, off-white, semi-grayish color. It looks really, really great. If there's two good things I can say about it, the first is the paint job. The second is the heft. This thing is entirely die-cast metal. Um, so it's it's got a nice weight to it. feels very solid. The pylons, the nacelles, everything is metal except uh, those things are some sort of semi-translucent plastic. Um... It feels very solid, very... It's just, it has a, has a really nice, high-quality feel to it, which I really like about it. Um, those are about the positives. The, the negatives, I don't like this stand. It's, I mean, it's cool that it is the Enterprise logo, but it's also super narrow, which makes it feel very flimsy from side to side. And, as you can see, it... It, it picks up a lot of vibration. And it also just terrifies me that it's going to snap off. If I twist this a little too much, I feel the little cap is going to just pop out. I think it's a plug. I'm afraid that it's just going to break off. Um, and it doesn't... I mean, it gives you that pose. That's it. Flat. No character to it. Um, granted, most of the stands on the ships that we're looking at here are going to have that same problem. Um, the other big problem with it is, well, before I get to that, the sculpting is a little bit minimal. There's nothing on the saucer except for these uh, three raised little dots. There's there's no grid line. There's no, um, I don't know what these other things are, but every other ship that we look at here has these little things sculpted in the saucer. Um, it does have a couple of really well-sculpted rings here and these windows. Uh, but that's most of the sculpting. There's almost nothing on the engineering hall. There's nothing on the neck. Um, there's a copyright stamp, which that's not a bad place to put it. It's kind of out of the way. It's really out of the way. It's not really noticeable. There on the other side it says Corgi. Um, the, the most detail is here at the front of the nacelles. There is some individual rings sculpted there a little bit, but this is the best part here at the end of the at the end of the nacelles. This is all lined. And I do like how the little who's it dealies, what's it's whatever these things are, are in there. Um but I don't know, it just it feels just a little bit too smooth. It looks beautiful though. It just it looks like it could use a little more sculpting detail. The biggest problem with this line is that it's completely dead. Corgi only released three ships. Um, the original Enterprise, the Enterprise D, and the Klingon Bird of Prey, which I don't have. They had a great Wave 2 lined up. It was going to be the Romulan Warbird, um, the Defiant, and I do not recall what the third ship was. Um, but they canceled it before they got there. And that makes me really mad, and I hate them for it. And I will never, ever, ever forgive them for that. And also for screwing the Star Wars license right before they released the last mini saber I needed. That's right for another day. So it's a great line, but there, or it's a great ship, but there's nothing to go with it. This is my white balance, so I'll try to leave that guy in frame. Um, the second ship I want to look at is the newest one I have of these. 
the Hot Wheels Enterprise. Um, quick scale, you can see it's about an inch and a half, maybe two inches shorter. So it's about seven inches long. Um, yeah, that's going to break. Take it off the stand. That stand really, I am super duper afraid it's going to break off. I really am. Um, this Hot Wheels ship, I think is being reissues, re reissued here soon. So if you don't have it, look for it. Um, it's not quite as big, but it's still a good size. Um, you can probably already see that this has a lot more sculpting in it. It's got windows sculpted into the engineering hull in the neck. Um, it has these things sculpted in the saucer. Um, it's got windows sculpted in the in the bridge section up here. More on the bottom of the saucer. Um, so the sculpting is just a little bit better. The deflector dish did look a little better on the corgi. Um, but uh, so anyway, more windows sculpted on the top. So that's a, a plus in this one over the other one. Um, another plus is that there are quite a few more Hot Wheels ships available. Um, the line, I guess, didn't do really well at retail, so they're, they're hard to find. But they've done the refit Enterprise from the motion picture. What else do I have? Uh, my head hurts, so I can't think straight. But I've, they've done the, the Enterprise D, um, the J.J. Abrams Enterprise, uh, Nero's ship, the Narada from the 2009 Star Trek. They've done the... Def not the Defiant, the Reliant from the Wrath of Khan, and a couple others. Anyway, there's a, there's a few more ships to go with it, which is definitely a plus. Um, I like that the front of the nacelles are a, a much more clear red. I don't know. I think just think it looks makes them look really cool. Plus, sometimes it catches the light neat. Um, the sculpting on the nacelles back here is still pretty good. These don't look quite as good, um, but it's it's still pretty decent. I hope I'm staying in frame. Um, another plus is I much prefer this stand. Uh, it, it's got a cool little translucent blue section. Plus, it's a bit of a ball joint, so I can angle it up or down or tilt it one way or the other. So I can have a lot more variety with the display. Um, which, when I have a few of these put together on the stand, it's it's nice to have them instead of just a flat ninety or whatever a flat boring angle. You can angle them, make them look more like they're flying. You can see different profiles of the ships. It is squeaky a little bit and I did drop my Enterprise refit on the ground once a few weeks ago and it broke that right off. Um, so I had to buy a new one because I couldn't get it out or fix it. Um, a couple of negatives. I, I like that these windows are sculpted but it would have been nice if some of them were painted. Like these are painted black and white. I think I'm shadowing it so there's some white paint and some black windows, rather, both. I, I wish some of these were painted, although I could do it myself with a Sharpie, which is what I've done with the Enterprise-E from Diamond Select. Um, the, my other thing about it is that only the engineering hull is metal. And actually, I think this little plastic cap, this cap here, this part is not metal. So just the main barrel, but not all of it. I don't like that the pylons are not metal, the nacelles are not metal, the saucer's not metal. So it doesn't feel as high quality as the Corgi does. But honestly, to be able to have it shooting up into space, that makes it better. Um, and, and like I said, because I dropped the Enterprise, the other Enterprise, the refit, um, I don't remember how it landed, but it, it broke the top of the standoff. So this translucent stuff might be a little bit fragile. So that's a little bit not good. The next one is this Hallmark 40th Anniversary Enterprise. Um, this is not the regular hanging from the tree one because that one is impossible to find, or rather it costs a ton of money on eBay. This is about the same size as the Hot Wheels, just a little bit smaller. Um, we'll start with the negatives here. This thing is completely plastic. It's very light. It, the sculpting is there, but it's kind of soft. It's not super great, although the underside does look pretty good. I hope it's not being washed out. I do not like the copyright info here. Um, that I don't like as much. But it still has more sculpted detail. 
in the saucer and in the engineering hole in the neck than the corgi did. Um, the paint is not nearly as good as the corgi. It's about as good as the Hot Wheels. Um, I don't like the stand at all. The base is very heavy because it has batteries. Um, this it, it does not connect super tight. It kind of it's supposed to plug into it good, so there's a good electrical contact. It kind of tends to pop up a little bit and get really wiggly, so that's kind of dumb. But the reason I have this Enterprise is because it lights up. Oh, wow, those are really hot lights. Let's just turn them. So we've got the dome, the bridge light. Whatever that is. And the nacelles. And that is really cool. It looks really good. Hopefully I've got the lighting right for it. That's neat. I really like that. I, I, I am not actually a huge fan of the original Enterprise theme song. The original Star Trek theme song. Um, so I would rather have had like Captain Kirk's voice. He could say something cool, but for people that like the theme song, that's neat. And I do love the light up feature. I guess I could disconnect the speaker if I really cared, but I don't. I do this about twice a year. Let's turn it again. So anyway, that's the only reason to get this thing. The detail isn't bad, but it's also not great. It's good volume. I hope that comes across clear. It's quite loud in person. Um, all right, second to the last one, and last one we're really going to spend any time on, the Feruda Enterprise. I reviewed this recently with all of the other Enterprises I have, but to compare it to the other ones, the, the sculpting is also not as sharp as on the Hot Wheels, but it has about the same amount of sculpting and detail, uh, so it looks good that way. It's a little more gray. The, the Hot Wheels is quite white. And because of the different materials, that this is one kind of plastic, this is another kind of plastic that's metal. And I had that all out of frame, so I'll do it again. Because this is one kind of plastic, and the saucer is another kind, and this is metal. There is there's a slightly noticeable difference to the white there. The Corgi definitely had that going for it. The same material, the paint all looks really good, and the same, same uniform, even color. Um, Again, one reason I like this is because I have all the Enterprises in the same line. I have some weird obsession with having all the various incarnations of the Enterprise in the same line to display next to each other. So Hot Wheels bothers me that they haven't done all of them yet. They haven't done the E. They haven't done the C. Corgi I will hate forever because they never got to any of the other ones. Um, but the Fruit, I have all of the major Enterprises. Um, I also like that the stand actually says which Enterprise it is. There's not a lot of paint apps here. Um, what there is is mostly clean, um, but I think the Hot Wheels is a little bit better. Although I didn't mention some of the slop there. There is a, the Corgi is definitely by far the superior paint job, and I really need to screw, glue this guy together so he stops falling apart. There's some paint mark, some stray paint marks. Um, I don't remember how much I paid for it. But this one's probably going to be the best for your value, the Hot Wheels. And then I also have the little stupid Micro Machines one here, which is mainly here for the white balance. It's tiny. Um, I don't like the super small scale, but I guess if you're really limited in space and you don't mind the lesser detail and accuracy, the Micro Machines might be a way to go. Some of them are very expensive, though. If you want an Enterprise E in the Micro Machines, be prepared to fork over between thirty and fifty dollars for it. Um, the Defiant is super expensive as well. Some of them are rare chase figures, which annoys me. But it's interesting that this is the only one that has the grid pattern sculpted into the saucer on both the top and the bottom. I do also have the large, what, 15-inch 15, 15 Diamond Select Enterprise, but that's packed up because I'm moving. So I didn't have it accessible, and it doesn't really fit in my light box anyway. So in conclusion, if you want to spend like 40 or 50 bucks, 
this one, the Corgi, is excellent. It's beautiful, um, slightly lacking in sculpted detail, but not a big deal, and oh, it feels so hefty. Um, it feels really good, but it's rarish, hard to find now, and they made nothing else. Except for the Enterprise D, which I think has an ugly paint job. So it doesn't even go well with it. So the Hot Wheels is probably the best one to get. Plus it's got the best stand. So, thanks for watching. There's your Star Trek for the evening. Go watch the new movie. I'm going to go this week, hopefully.